look at all of you guys here saying, I want freedom. I want freedom. Amen. And the neat thing is God has freedom that he wants to give. I'm going to go through a couple things before we get started. Uh, the first thing that I want to do, let's go ahead and grab your books, okay? This is going to be your work that you're going to have through the rest of this conference. This is our notes, okay? Uh, um, there's some of us really put a lot of notes in. Some of us, you're going to have to add into the, the gaps of what you want, but this is going to be your tool through the next three days. There's going to be a lot of things that are set up here that you're going to want to go back later and reread again, things that God is going to hit you. Let's go ahead and go to the first page. Uh, actually, you know what? That's just the schedule. Let's go to the second page right here. It says Freedom Conference. It's, page, it's marked as page one. This is an important part of our conference. It's called the Cross Exchange. And what I'm going to ask you guys to do right now is to go ahead and rip that out of your book because we're going to do something with it. Okay. Just rip it right out. It does not rip on that perforated line. Don't try it. You won't make it. Now, what we want you to do is this. Throughout the next three days, your cross exchange, you are going to write down things that the Lord tells you that you want to get rid of in your life. And just Some of you guys already know some of these things. Loneliness. I, I, I'm a slavery to the loneliness of my life. I just feel alone like no one's around. And I know that that's not true, but I can't stop it. Or, or rejection or whatever it is that you may feel. I want you to write those things down on the cross exchange. And the reason why you pull it out is because as we go through the book, you're going to insert it into whatever notes so you can quickly write down something. And, and this is private. This is for you. This is not for anybody else um, to see because at the end of this conference, we are going to leave this paper and all of the things that we have it before the cross. Does that sound good? We are going to understand ourselves. God is going to bring freedom, and we're going to leave those things at the cross. It's an exchange. We're going to give up what we felt about ourselves, and we're going to get what God tells us about ourselves. Is that good? So make sure you always uh, bring that, and most likely every speaker will remind you, say, hey, pull your cross exchange, push it into page number, whatever we're on, and we're going to keep moving through right there. Uh, so make sure you have that. Your notes are right here. I also want to tell you... Um, I really want to encourage you guys not to just come to one or two of these day meetings, but to go to all three of them. Stay as long as you can through Saturday. Really make the effort because all of these, uh, these sessions, they build off each other. Today, we're going to be going through something called the lineup. And the lineup is basically lining up our understanding to the freedom that God wants to bring. It's understanding our identity. It's understanding God's authority. And it's understanding how we got into bondage, the anatomy of strongholds. So today is going to be shaping our minds to be able to uh, receive what God is going to do the next two days. And tomorrow, we're going to go through a section called the cleanup. And the cleanup is like an exciting time. It's, I mean, you just feel the presence of God moving through this place as we go through different subjects. Amen. I'm telling you, he already feels it. And, and then on Saturday, the last part, we do the fill up. They all move in consecutive order. So if you want freedom in your life and you haven't got the freedom that you want, but you desire it, then do not miss his next three days, okay? Don't go to two and say, I tried that, it didn't work. You guys catch what I'm saying? I want you to go to all three days. And uh, Linda, can you come up here, mom? In it, um, I wanna just, she told me a story about someone that I want her to tell you guys. It is, do you have a microphone? Yes. Okay, um, it is a story, come on up. It is, I won't bite, again. And uh, <laughs> uh, it is a story about what happens inside of people as they are on this journey to freedom. And one thing I like about this story, not only is it absolutely amazing and profound, it's not a story from years ago that we keep using. This is a story from how many days ago? Uh, two, two weeks. Two weeks ago. This is like normal. So please tell us the story right now. We just finished our freedom classes. So we teach six classes leading up to this conference, just kind of like watering the weeds, helping you understand how to hear from God. This whole thing is about how you hear from God. So during this um, time where we're teaching them what is the enemy saying, what is God saying, what's just you, this um, friend of mine um, came up and she told me that she had worked through, a, had some real hard and difficult things happen in her life. And she had really worked through it and had some counseling and there was a lot of healing and, and wonderfulness, but there was a heaviness that was stayed in her chest. 
and recently her father passed away. And I might get some details a little bit off, but um, I, th I think I can get the gist just right. Um, her father passed away, and she woke up one night in bed, and she was just laying there awake, and she thought she just wanted to talk to her father, and she just said, I'm so glad you're in heaven. I'm just so glad you're in heaven. And suddenly she said it was as if a vision happened, and she saw behind her father was her ex-husband who had um, been very abusive. They had divorced, and he had taken his own life eventually. And she always wondered if he was in heaven, and she saw him in heaven, and she said, I'm so glad you're here. And she said a look passed between them of forgiveness, repentance, of just goodness. And she heard the Lord all of a sudden say, but are you glad? And I'm just going to say the name Tom. Are you glad Tom's here? And she looked over and she saw the uncle who had abused her as a child. And she was staring at him and she thought, enough of the work of God had happened in her life that she said, yes, I'm glad he's here. And suddenly glass broke, like a shattered glass went all over the place, and this black mist came up and away from her. And the dream ended, or the vision ended. And she was wondering, what was that? What was the glass? What was the blackness? And and the next week in counseling with um, her therapist, they, she had figured out that um, in the medical field, toxins are kept in glass, so they're protected. And she had kept this toxin in her that had been protected. She had protected it in the wrong way. And when she had said she was glad, she had really forgiven, full forgiveness of this person, and that protection had broken, and this, this toxin was released, and she said, uh, for the first time, this freedom was in her chest. This, these are the things God yeah. loves to do. Amen. As she, as she forgave, the toxin of bitterness left her. I love that. I'm, I'm going to give you a quick one. Um, I was talking to a, a young, um, uh, uh, he's not young man anymore, a man, and he was telling me about um, his own feeling. He went through the classes days ago. We're talking days ago. I, we can go through all these different stories. And he says, Neil, I've just, I, it has been so long since I've felt this lightness and this just free, carefree feeling. And I said, I'm curious. He's 44 years old. How long ago was it when was the last time you remembered feeling like you do right now? And he said, when I was five and I was at church. Do you remember how carefree five was? And I'm just telling you guys, freedom is real and it's available and God wants to give it to us. Amen? Amen. Okay, uh, but someone doesn't want to give it to you. Someone wants to keep you in bondage and keep you in slavery, and that is our enemy, the devil, doesn't he? And I just want to say a couple things, and then we're going to get started on this. The enemy does not want any of you here, and it's important to recognize this. And he is going to try to make sure that you're not here. That's, that is his job, and he's good at really making it so that we won't be here. He does all kinds of things. Sometimes when we're in here right now, you're just going to feel like a sick feeling. You know, you just got like a stomach ache, and you're going to want to leave. I want you to do something. When you get that stomach feeling, or whatever, whatever it is, I want you to say, I rebuke you, stomach ache, in the name of Jesus. I want to be here for what God has. I want you to say that, okay? He's going to try to get us out for lots of different reasons. Turn your phone off, okay? Because he is going to have a couple of things happen. Someone call you that you're going to feel like you're going to need, need to leave for, or someone's going to say something that's going to be mean and aggressive because the enemy's working on them to try to put you in a bad mood so that you don't listen. Don't, just don't engage. Do not, over the next three days, Fight with your spouse, all right? Just <laughs> let him off the hook, okay? Uh, he's going to try to get us to leave to go to the bathroom. And listen, first off, you got to leave to go to the bathroom. That we're all adults. Leave and go to the bathroom. But recognize, in the moment, am I leaving because I'm over 50 and I have to do it two times during these meetings? <laughs> or, <laughs> or am I leaving because I'm... I think the enemy does not want me to hear what's going to come. Does that sound good? Over the next three days, do not go home after these meetings and watch bad thing, Game of Thrones. Don't watch 
some of these bad things. Listen, for the next three days, let the Lord permeate every part of you. Does that sound good? 